20 years ago, I lived and worked in New York City, and my life looked something like this. Today I live in a Bangkok townhouse with seven Siamese ladies who are eager to focus on keeping me healthy and happy. Now that's an outcome one never would have predicted. This video is about the unpredictable twists and turns, the ups and downs, or stated more technically, spontaneous bifurcations of order arising from a chaotic universe. More Simply stated, shit happens. Long before the Metaverse or the Matrix, Douglas Adams wrote a farcical tale about how a small blue planet orbiting an insignificant yellow star in a not very interesting part of the Milky Way galaxy was nothing more than a model. It was kind of a longitudinal computer study constructed by pan-dimensional beings, or mice to test out complicated theories and discover the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. The name of this crazy tale is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. While the plot of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is wildly different from the Matrix movie or the concept of a metaverse, the underlying principles they all share is that the human race is but an insignificant little part of a larger computer landscape that controls humanity's outcome. The good part of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is that it offers readers practical answers to dealing with the uncertainty inherent in such a complex state of being. For instance, it gives you the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything. We want you to tell us the answer. The answer to what? The answer to life, the universe, everything. We'd really like an answer. Something simple. Deep thought. Do you have an a answer for you? Yes, but you're not going to like it. It doesn't matter. We must know it. All right. The answer to the ultimate question of life the universe and everything is forty two. Yes, yes, I thought it over quite thoroughly. It is, it's forty two. Yeah, you kind of got to read the book, but the tone does provide very practical advice, kind of a two-step solution for when you're out there dancing with chaos. Number one, bring a towel. Number two, don't panic. The main character in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is Arthur Dent, a nervous English dude who thinks his main problem is trying to keep his house from being bulldozed to make room for a bypass. Arthur's friend and drinking buddy, Ford Prefect, is actually an intergalactic traveling writer and contributor to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. A yoga teacher that used to work for me was a English-Russian-speaking writer for Lonely Planet. She was also a CIA spook. How's that for improbability? But we'll get back to the yoga stuff later. Let's stick with Arthur and, and, and Ford and see what they're up to. Ford Prefect gets himself and Arthur off Earth moments before far-gone intergalactic space engineers destroy the planet to make way for an intergalactic planet.
this story is a laugh a minute tale about these guys zipping around the universe on an infinite improbability engine and the whole thing is designed to make you think WTF what is real anyway and what does this have to do with a retired old fireman living in Bangkok well I'm gonna get to that For the last three years of my 20 year employment in the New York City Fire Department, I fretted daily about what I should do with my life. I was a lot like Arthur Dent. Arthur was a fretter. Should I retire at the 20 year threshold and collect a nice pension, or should I stay in the fire department? I like being a fireman. Being a fireman is a bit like chaos management, somewhat related to improbability. I wound up retiring as soon as possible on September 10, 2001. The next day, my replacement got killed at the World Trade Center. There's a little improbability inside of that story for sure. But wait, there's more. I recently noticed the show on Netflix about United Flight 93, a 9-11 story. I already know all about that stuff that happened back then and I don't want to be living in the past, so I was a little reluctant to watch the Netflix show but I wound up watching it. On the morning of September 11th, I was on an airplane. My flight narrowly missed a mid-air collision with one of the hijacked flights buzzing around the Northeast United States that morning. I always presumed it was Flight 93. Watching the Netflix show, I discovered it was not Flight 93. It was the plane that hit the Pentagon that we narrowly avoid a mid-air collision with. I wrote a story about my retirement on 9-11, along with a near miss on my plane ride that morning. A commenter dismissed the story about my two life-saving occurrences as too improbable to be true. I understood his skepticism. But yeah, he's a jerk. This was my life. Perhaps the plane that I was on was also powered by an infinite improbability engine. As alluded to earlier when I mentioned my friend, employee, yoga teaching, Lonely Planet contributor, Russian English speaking CIA consultant, Wendy, I wound up in the yoga business. Such a likelihood would have been considered highly improbable in my younger days. However, just prior to retiring from the fire department, I met a yoga teacher when her laundry caught fire. She made me do yoga, and I liked it. So there I was enjoying running a small yoga business in Western Massachusetts, two yoga studios with 19 employees. It was an enterprise that was profitable and fun. Then in 2008, the world economy nearly collapsed. It all had something to do with stuff like collateralized debt obligations, credit default swaps, and derivatives. Highly complex finance shit. It was so complex, even the people making billions of dollars with them were clueless as to their value. Here again, a highly improbable thing happened. The housing market collapsed. This was not good for the yoga business. I wound up in Singapore teaching in a tricked out, very expensive yoga spa. I went from being a disappointed entrepreneur to an internationally known yoga stud making more money than when I was busting my ass running a business back in the States. Managing yoga teachers is kind of like herding cats. I liked Singapore a lot, but after four years, the fancy ass Singapore yoga spa went out of business. Without a work permit, I could not stay in Singapore. Uh, yeah, by now I had read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't panic. <laughs> Bangkok. The Thais were happy to have me. Then, after five years of living and teaching yoga in Bangkok, Singapore now seemed boring. Once again, yet another pan-galactic improbable bifurcation emerged from an infinite probability engine. Or maybe it was just mad Chinese scientists screwing around with bats and viruses. Whatever.
In March 2020, United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo got my attention. Secretary Pompeo has an uncanny resemblance to Vargon space engineers. I wonder if he recites bad poetry. Pompeo was saying things are going to shit. I'm paraphrasing. U.S. citizens should get their asses back to the States. So my small yoga studio is in my Bangkok home on the second floor. I had a partner, Ms. Buakau, kind of working for me, but we had a personal relationship as well. If I went home to the States, her and her family would have been in trouble. You see, part of the deal of her working for me was that her family can live in this great big house and her three children and her were living under my roof for nearly five years. So if I left to go home to the States, that would have been really bad for them. And, you know, hell, I'm an old fireman. I don't panic. And I have a yoga studio. I have plenty of towels. What started out as just a, an attempt on my part to do the right thing and make sure people were taken care of. My folks back in the States, my family back in the States were all doing okay. And I'm certainly doing all right. So I decided to stay here and, you know, take care of Bullcow and her three kids. Well, the three kids have morphed into something more like nine people, all but one of them female hanging around here and, uh, you know, being part of the family. It's been an extraordinary experience, actually, for, for all of us, we're all involved. Sorry, I gotta watch where I'm walking here. So, yeah, I have this, you know, lovely family of Thai women living with me in the house, and, you know, we're all taking care of each other. You've met some of them already. If you watch my videos, not long Sai here has been uh, the subject of one of my recent videos. And uh, who else did we do here? Yeah, we did uh, Shampoo, the girl with the pink hair. The country girl with the pink hair got her own video a little bit recently. And she's just got like a million dollar smile on this kid. <laughs> so, Kelly has been under my roof since she's seven years old. How old are you now? How old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. You'll be fourteen soon, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's kind of grown up here. She's my girl. It's like, you know, she's my daughter. It's like, it's, you know, we went to school last week to get her a vaccination, and the teachers were all like, oh, is that your father? And she's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Nong Pear, I'm not allowed to be too friendly with Nong Pear because it upsets her sister, who's a bull cow. And, Kind of the head of the household, but I like her. <laughs> she won't get a video. That would get me in trouble. And this one disappeared on us for a while. This is Miss Pinky. Did you know that in Pasa Anklit, this means Pinky? <laughs> She's also 13, and she lived with us for about a year, went up to the country and lived on the farm for a while. She's back now, and I'm really glad to see her. She's, she's, uh, she makes the family more complete, at least for me, anyway. Welcome home. And. <laughs> let me save the best for last. Something shifted by simply trying to do the right thing. And, um, you know, suddenly I have a family. And this here is the, uh, the, head, of the head of the household. At least the female head of the household. When I wanted to be. So yeah, we're doing good. So yeah, uh, you know, bring a towel, don't panic, and you know, put one foot in front of the other. You never know what's going to happen. See you in the next video. Thanks.